How do historians know what was happening in medieval England? One important source are chroniclers, historians or some might even say journalists of their day. These were typically monks employed by wealthy patrons. I've come to London Metropolitan Archives to meet with Jack D. Pros to find out more. So Jack, what is a chronicle? Um, a chronicle was a method of recording events throughout history. Um, it was quite a popular way to, to keep track of important events in different periods of British history. Um, one of the most famous chronicles would be the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, um, created over a thousand years ago. But they were still used in the high medieval periods and later in the early modern period as well to um, chronologically list events. Um, I suppose that the main difference between a chronicle and what we would think of as history or historiography is a chronicle um, sort of lists events quite matter-of-factly. There's no analysis, there's no real interpretation usually, um, but that isn't to say that a, a chronicle is, is an unbiased sort of source because they're often coloured by the chronicler's own sort of um, perceptions of the world around them, their opinions, but also um, they were commissioned often by wealthy and powerful individuals. So um, if you were a chronicler writing for a king, it would be unwise potentially to um, uh, aggrandise the king's rivals or, or slander the ruling house. Yeah. So what can you tell me about this particular chronicle? So this is the Great Chronicle of London and re resides here now at London Metropolitan Archives. Um, and it covers the period of history roughly from Richard I's reign, so around 1189, um, right up until the first few years of Henry VIII's reign. Um, it was written by three distinct chroniclers, and, or hands as they would be called, um, and that's sort of shown by the difference in handwriting and also the difference in, in inks that, that have been used in the different sections. So the first main section is um, writing of the events sort of up to the mid 15th century, but from the perspective of someone alive in the 15th century. So this wasn't written along with contemporary events. Much of this book is looking back on on historical events. The later two hands that recorded events in this chronicle did so um, during the reign of Henry VII and Henry VIII um, after the, the Wars of the Roses. So um, it would have been important for Henry VII to, to solidify his rule with an official chronicle of the city that he spent most of his time in, um, particularly after the Battle of Bosworth, seizing the crown from Richard III. There could have been potential for quite heavy Lancastrian bias in this chronicle but to be fair, the, 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 the accounts of, of the Wars of the Roses are, are quite fair to Yorkist rulers. There's not a huge amount of slander driven towards uh, sort of Edward IV or, or Richard III. Um, so although they're not, they're not aggrandised, it's, it's still a good fair account of, of that really interesting period of, of British history. What other famous events does the Chronicle cover? So like I said, the, the Chronicle mainly deals with events happening within the City of London and because of that it, it does build a very vivid picture of what life may have been like in, in medieval London and early modern London. Um, I suppose one of the, 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 the most interesting sort of snippets um, that, that people might sort of be able to relate to, to quite famous history from this period is there's a near contemporary account of the princes in the tower, um, the ill-fated princes in the tower in, in this Chronicle. Um, so the princes Edward and and Richard are described here playing in the gardens of, of the Tower of London, um, potentially before their uncle Richard III had uh, other sort of designs for their future. So what can you tell us about the Chronicle as an object? I mean, I personally think it's a beautiful document um, for many reasons. It's got a really, really expressive um, handwriting used throughout and three different distinct types of, 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 of sort of hand but also the, the inks used are really interesting. So if you can see on this page here, the ink has sort of, has sort of began to bleed out slightly, whereas in the earlier portions of the, um, the chronicle, it hasn't. Okay, so um, the conservationers, uh, the conservators, sorry, here, think that's down to due to the type of ink being used um, in different periods. And ink at the time wasn't mass produced. It was a homemade thing. So. Um, it's likely that the ink that's bled here used a type of iron that has reacted poorly over time. Um, but it just shows the different, it demarks the chroniclers quite clearly um, in that. Another part of this document that I just adore is the, these illuminated um, hand-drawn 
illustrations you get in this beautiful index down the side here mm. and also in the, the first letters of each page. And some of them have little faces of, uh, of quite grumpy looking men in them, um, which always makes me smile. Um, yeah, and I think it's, it's, you can see how hand-drawn and, you know, it's quite distinct to the rest of the, the document. There isn't a lot of illustration in, in, in this, uh, this document, but, but the index is certainly a real, a real treat at the end. Um, and I mean, I suppose lastly, the provenance of this book and who it has been used by over, over the years is fascinating. So um, some of the sort of early historians of, of Britain, people like John Fox, who, who famously wrote the uh, Acts of Monuments, the, the Book of Martyrs, um, during the Elizabethan period, um, he, he owned this book. So he would have used this to inform when he was writing about um, proto-Protestants and, and connecting Protestantism to a persecuted church. Mm -hmm. He may well have used this chronicle to, to help um, sort of ground his, his uh, understanding of, of periods. Um, so I think that's fascinating. And later, um, it was then owned by uh, John Stowe, um, who, who was again, a, a, about a generation later, a, a historian who, who also owned this, uh, this document. So it's, it's, um, it's been in some pretty important hands as well. And if I want to find out more about life in medieval London, where can I start? Uh, so we're the place to come, uh, the London Metropolitan Archives. Um, if, you, if you pop us into Google um, and look on our catalogue, we've got some amazing research guides for all sorts of different areas of history. That'll be a good place to start um, on our, on our catalogue. That will give you lists of um, documents that you're better to order up and sort of some context for the sort of types of, of collections that we hold around um, medieval London. Because we, we hold all the, the documents for the City of London Corporation. So, that's one of the oldest local authorities in the world, going all the way back to the time of William the Conqueror. So, um, yeah, it's it's a great resource to have, and I think I think with our catalogue, um, you'll be able to find some really interesting documents such as this to to research. Brilliant.